It is often said that we have three equal branches of government, and we often kind of misattribute the this conception to government that the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judiciary are equal in power. From a theoretical point of view, that is not accurate. Um, it's never been accurate. Even the founding fathers of America argued that there was one power substantially greater than any other power that government possesses, and that is the power to legislate. The power to legislate is the power to make rules. It's the power to confine and restrict what is allowed within certain governing parameters and what is not allowed. When we start looking at the legislative branch in Texas, we overwhelmingly recognize the, the power that was potentially given to the legislature through giving them a legislative power. The Texas legislative branch is going to be broken into two um, relatively democratic institutions. We're going to have the House of Representatives and the Senate. I do apologize. They named it exactly the same as the federal government. I didn't do that, but it is confusing because our House and our Senate are very different than the federal government's House and the federal government's Senate or what is used to construct what we call Congress, which is the federal government's legislature. In Texas, we refer to our legislature as simply the Texas legislature or the Tex Ledge. But as a legislative power, the legislature is going to be able to construct the limits of existence for its citizens. They get to decide what rules are made and what rules are going to be put into play within the state of Texas. Now, as you, as you studied in Unit 1, Texans are very hesitant to allow the government a lot of power. And within the context of our legislature, this is overwhelmingly intact. What you're going to go through in this unit is you're going to find out that our legislature is very restricted. Um, they only have um, a certain amount of time that they can do, 180 days every other year in which they can act outside of special sessions. Um, when they are in session, they're heavily restricted on what they can do when they are there. They're not paid much at all. Uh, the the argument that, oh, legislatures get paid a ton of money and government officials get paid a money, that's not true when it comes to the Texas legislature. They get paid really, really, really low salaries because Texans didn't want a professional legislature. We didn't want people building careers off of working in government. We wanted individual citizens, everyday citizens, that left their veterinarian practices or their law practices and they went for a couple months and they basically did what needed to be done from a state point of view and they didn't do what didn't need to be done. They didn't want them to have the opportunity to act arbitrarily, act without a convincing need. And so as you walk through the legislative branch, you're going to find the branch is very restrictive, um, very limited in what's its ability to do. And this is important for us as students of government because I have so often students in my government class that come in like, well, Crosby, why don't they just? Why don't they just? Why don't they just? And a lot of times the answer is, well, they can't. Um, I know there's a lot of common sense stuff that we want them to see them do, but a lot of times they can't do it because the Texas State Constitution, that constitution we studied last unit, the Constitution of 1876, the constitution that was written in a time period very distrustful of government, it doesn't allow them to do a lot of these things we want them to do. They're literally restricted and confined because remember, one of the, one of the core governing principles of Texas is government inaction is better than government action. It's almost like this supposed maxim that Texas would rather not have their government act than to act. Because once again, government action comes with the threat of tyranny, the threat of coercion, the threat of um, eliminating freedoms that you had beforehand. And that's an important thing to understand. A lot of times we look at laws and students don't understand that laws are nothing more or less than rules, rules that confine your existence, rules that take away freedoms that you had otherwise. Now, some of these rules are good rules. Um, obviously, you could use most obviously the rule not to kill. That would be a good rule in society. But we're taking away the people's right to kill people indiscriminately. And so there is a trade-off, right? Now, many of us, hopefully, would never have wanted to exercise that freedom. But in a world without government, one could argue, 
Well, what's restricting that? And so the government does impose and the government is going to restrict and confine the sphere of authority that you have to act. The question is, how big should that sphere be? Right? How wide should we allow uh, government to act and how wide should the action of the individual really be preserved? Right? This is a new thing when it comes to the, um, the United States of America because every state differs on this. There are some states that they restrict their people far greater. Um, and there are some states that they really kind of lay back and they said, we're going to give our people maximum freedom. We're only going to act when we absolutely need to. Um, and I think Texas is kind of, uh, historically, we've been more on the latter side of that argument of let the people act. And here lately, um, even though we have a lot of talk of individual action in Texas, here lately, it seems that the government is becoming more willing to act um, and more willing to find ways to override local authority and individual autonomy. Um, we can see this in the Denton fracking bans. We can see this in some of the plastic bag mandates um, that some of the progressive area eras, areas, um, rather my apologies, wanted to enact and they were overridden by the state. And so there's a kind of an interesting context here, whereas on one hand, the state says we want to encourage personal autonomy, but more and more we're seeing the state willing to act in ways that they have not historically um, been willing to act. And so there's a lot of interesting things happening at Texas State, uh, Texas state Legislature when it comes to matters of personal freedom, personal license, and what we can do individually to act. Now, along this way, we're also going to look at finances and policy. Um, everybody's favorite thing. In order to do anything, the state has to make money to do something. Even basic rules require some money to enforce and lay out those rules. And so we're going to have to look at taxes. How are we taxed? Why are we taxed? And where do our taxes go? Part of our taxes go to the state, but part of our tax money goes to localities, counties, and a bunch of of other stuff. And so part of this unit is I've wrapped in the lawmaking process with this kind of taxing agency because the taxes originate in the lawmaking process. They can decide how much money is required by the governing entities in order to carry out those functions of government. Um, this is something that a lot of students kind of um, turn a blind eye to. I have students all the time like, well, if we would just do this and if we would just do this, and I'm like, uh, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Ching. Anytime you say government should do this, right, on the front end of that equation, you have to compensate for the money to do that. Um, there's a lot of demands right now that the government should forgive student loans. Okay, fair enough. But how are you going to pay for that? Right now, the common refrain is like, well, we're just going to take money from the rich. Well, we have to have a better conversation on how much money is fair, right? Well, how much, how much taxing is fair within given entity. And regardless of fair, if you raise taxes too much, do people start leaving your state, right? So if you're kind of saying we're going to tax the wealthy, well, the wealthy can be taxed as long as they live in your state. But if you tax them too heavily, there's no reason why they would stay. And then you would lose all of that tax revenue. And so there's a lot of more sophisticated arguments that need to be had when it comes to raising funds and then spending those funds. And that's part of this unit. The last part of this unit is gonna be in public policy. Taking a look at some of the areas of Texas that we have historically struggled in developing sound policy. Education is one, environmental policy is one. Um, Texas has a strong reliance on some areas of economic interest, but those areas of economic interest have allowed Texas to grow, to expand, and to develop um, and become one of the largest states in the union, the second largest when it comes to population, the second largest when it comes to geography. And so Texas now is a much different state than the state we were when we drafted the 1876 Constitution. And there's a lot of arguments out there that says our policy should reflect the evolution of our state. In some ways, that argument makes sense. In other ways, um, I think maybe the founding uh, fathers of Texas had a better argument and we should be hesitant to change. But we have to have a better conversation when it comes to policy and what needs to be changed and what needs to be left alone, what should require more collective action, and what isn't there yet. What action may be actually more hurtful and more harmful to individuals than actually beneficial. Right? So enjoy this unit, have fun working through this, dive into the policy, and, and really try to wrap your head around 
the all elements of the power, not just the they should, they should, they should, but really begin wrapping your head around everything that's required for the government to act and what we give up as citizens when the government does act. Now, none of this is going to mean the government shouldn't act, but it does mean that we as citizens of Texas are compelled to make a better argument to justify that action when we're demanding it. Right. I'll see you next time.